call it. I'm so thankful that Singaporean toast box came to Beijing. David, I've been up since 7 a.m., okay? I was up earlier before you and Justin were. I've been thinking about food for the past four hours and I haven't eaten anything but a couple vitamin gummies. We are about to review the best chain in Asia that will probably never make it to America. Oh! In Hong Kong, we've been to it in Singapore, that's Where's where they're from. from. They have over 70 locations there, but they are opening up worldwide. Oh, they got Indonesia, good. Malaysia, China. We're talking about Toast Box. Yes. Toast Box. Kaya Toast. Laksa. Kopi TM. This is the best Asian food chain that'll probably never make it to America. Let's oh. go. Box actually, it's supposed to represent this kind of coffee culture called Nanyang. Really popular in Singapore uh, in the 60s when Singapore was become, uh, becoming a sovereign state. That's why it kind of has like these throwback vibes. It's supposed to pretty much look like Singapore in the 60s. All right, you guys, so we dropped 407. 407 spent 60 bucks here. That's $20 a person. It's about to be lit at Toast Box. Mm. <laughs> Yo, Andrew, we got so much food. I'm pretty excited. This is definitely cheaper than Singapore, though. Oh, definitely, bro. Like 60 bucks in Singapore would not get you this much. Dog. Singapore is a lot. Singapore's pricing is actually pretty similar to America. If not higher, it's a nice country. Yeah. Have you ever been there? It's very clean. No crime. We are at the Beijing Toast Box. I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is exactly like Toast Box in Singapore or in Hong Kong or wherever else in Taiwan, Thailand. And maybe it shouldn't be. Why would it be? We're They're in Northern China. So usually with Kaya Toast, which is probably the thing that, you know, Toast Box is pretty much named after. You're supposed to dip, you're it, supposed in to a, dip it in a soft boiled egg. You know, the yolk is runny, sauce. the egg white is barely cooked and there's soy sauce and it's really good. It's, it's, it's very eggy, it's sweet, it's salty, but they don't do that in Beijing anymore. No one was ordering it. So they just gave you the hard boiled egg. Which is kind of funny because when we first got it, we were kind of like, what? That's not how we usually <laughs> eat it. How are you going to dip that in that? Try, and then, try to dip it. Literally. <laughs> literally. We asked them like three times, hey, can we get a soft egg? And they were just like, nah, nah, we don't we serve don't, it anymore. <laughs> Who's going? Looks like Venom from Spider-Man. So we're going to open up with the Kaya Toast and a soft boiled egg. Yeah, like that. It'll give you the same vibe. Kaya Toast, Beijing, Beijing style. Still delicious. It doesn't not taste like it, but you guys, if you've never had Kaya toast, it's coconut jam. It's delicious, man. You know, people watching from Singapore are really like, what? <laughs> Andrew, next up, we've got peanut butter toast. Uh, it didn't look like the picture. It didn't the look like the picture, picture but is there anything special about this? Peanut butter's pretty good. Supposed to drink it with coffee. Dipped in coffee. Coffee is the Malay term for coffee. Call it. I'm so thankful that Singaporean toast box came to Beijing. Yeah, they might be doing things a little bit differently here, but that's why it's interesting. Try to get through the baked goods real oh quick. Oh my gosh, the bolo yao. Okay, bolo yao is like a pineapple uh, a baked bun with a slice of uh, Very butter. Very popular in Hong Kong, made it to Singapore. I gotta ask though, how is the butter only gonna make it like one fifth the way yeah, through? Yeah, that was really interesting. It was just a little indentation. It was like a little, just a little. Just a little mouth. A little hyphen, a little apostrophe. Bolo yo, bolo yo. Good. If you got the wedge, if you hit it, I have to only bite with butter. Oh, that chicken stock is delicious. You guys know chicken rice. This is one of the most popular dishes of Singapore. This is actually one of the dishes I believe that they will be able to execute well. Yes. So in Singapore for chicken rice, they don't necessarily have the 
ginger scallion sauce, but they have a different spicy ginger sauce, and then they have, of course, the sweet soy sauce. Still really good, but not super, not maybe as Singaporean tasting. I mean, I'd still say it's pretty good. Chicken, Chicken rice. rice. I don't really like the thick sweet soy sauce. Yeah. I never like it. I know I know you always dip yours in though. I do. The flavored Hainan rice. Where's the rice? You know what's funny? In Singapore, they don't call it Hainan chicken rice, but in China they do. What I heard is that it was started in Southeast Asia by Chinese immigrants, part of the diaspora from Hainan. Like That's it didn't I'm necessarily come from Hainan. Start in Hainan, but no. the people were Hainanese. Right. Okay. Interesting. Hainan chicken rice overall, pretty good. Maybe not quite Singaporean level. Recipe might be slightly tweaked, but it's still good. Probably still some of the better Hainan chicken you can find in Beijing. Soy, soy sauce, sauce chicken. chicken. They call it soya chicken. Naked first. Mmm. All right, time to dip it in the sauce. Oh man, Maggie. Mmm. I could see some people picking the brown Hainan over the white one. Mm. Let me eat the chicken with the noodles, bro. That soy rice with the noodles, with the, some sauce. That's so good. Hey, the chicken's out in Asia, though. Real skinny. Skinny, but flavorful. Dip it in the sauce. Boom, like that. Bite of the noodles. No, there is some flavor of Shandong Xiaoji. If you guys know, Shandong heavily influenced the uh, flavor profile of Beijing. We are eating at a Singaporean chain in Beijing. Obviously, they have to localize. We're all the chicken. At Toastbox, I think if you are looking for this style of food in Beijing, this is it. It ain't 100% authentic to Singapore, but it's delicious. You know, we're talking about global brands, local tastes here. We got Zhajiangmian. Uh, I would say Zhajiangmian takes on so many different looks, and this is definitely more of the Taiwanese Fujianese style, which, if you do know, Fujianese, Hokkien, Minnanghua, all of the same, same very, region. very closely related. And that Hokkien people are mostly in Singapore. That's still really good. Wow. I don't want to say it doesn't have any bean paste flavor. Come on now. But yeah, with the oh my God, that's good. pieces of chopped tofu, symbolic of a different uh, regional difference, but it's really good. You know, to me, that's why I said Toast Box is the best Asian chain that I've ever made to America. Even when they're doing, you know, Zha Mian in Beijing, it still tastes good. I think a Beijing person would like that. So Jialan is uh, Chinese broccoli, right? But they, they put sort of a Malay Singaporean sauce on it. So this in and of itself is a toast box hybrid. Mmm. Mmm. Because we're half Northern Chinese and half Southern Chinese, does this dish and this dish represent us? Because it's a hybrid. Bro. Oh. Zha Man is actually really good. Andrew, you are a Zha Zha Man connoisseur. Freaking good, man. Ovaltine, I always thought it said overtime. Oh, I gotta say, David, that is the best Ovaltine I've ever had in my entire life. Hold up. That was mixed perfectly. It's extra chocolatey. It's tasty. It's got nutrients and vitamins. Yeah, that one was hella good. Hey, I'm gonna tell you this. Hey, just like Singapore, just like a hawk stall, it's hot. Okay, so this curry chicken, no noodles, has some uh, fried tofu strips. Great, nice piece of of a one, drumstick one right here. Chicken leg. Singaporean curry chicken. That's kind of crazy. This Jolly G is pretty good. If the chicken was just a little bit more juicy, yeah, yeah. this would be killer. Because this curry chicken flavor is immaculate. Mmm. I just drank it. And that's for a man on keto. Yeah, and I'm a man on a low rice diet right now. The chicken skewers, in classic Beijing fashion, no sauce. No saute sauce. For some reason, Beijing restaurants, they're not all about the sauce. I'm going to dip this. I'm dipping a chicken oh skewer God. in the chicken curry. Mm. This pork? That's chicken, bro. It's a heavily marinated chicken. Zuro! You're right. The pork. I know my sensor for meat, bro. If you go to Singapore or Malaysia, they are gonna swear by this dish. Laksa. Mmm. It, it captured, it captured wow. that. 
that dried shrimp hama shot yeah. flavor. Uh, like a shrimpy extra coconutty curry. You know how I like to eat shrimp. This is the food that keeps Singapore moving. This is the food that allowed Singapore to be one of the nicest Asian countries in history. You mean it, it allowed Singapore to rise to become one of the four Asian tigers? K Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan. What do they mean by tigers? Oh, uh, they're just powerful for their size. Pork, Pork chop sandwich, sandwich, Beijing toast box. Chopped up cucumber, lots of mayo, egg, meat, uh, crust cut off. Asians don't like crust because with Asian bread, there is no crust, they're just buns. You dip this in the curry, crazy. Crazy man. One muggy. That's good? You'll freaking love that, man. The sweetness of that. That's good. Anyway. I don't know if it's better than sandwich, but it is good. You know, Toast Box just entered the mainland China market two years ago, roughly. Mm -hmm. uh, the menu's already changed, they've had to localize, but I think the spirit and the backbone of Singapore has been maintained. Salted, Salted egg yolk dan tak. No. My biggest takeaway in terms of a macro cultural insight uh, as I eat this brown sugar dan tak, which I've never had before. Mm. Innovative. Me and you, we have our mom is from northern China, our dad is from way southern China, our mom is from way northern China. It is a mix because those two, I'm not gonna lie and say both sides of the family are gonna be best friends. For regions, speak different languages, eat different foods, have different attitudes about life. And that is very true. And I do think those very real cultural differences are a cause for misunderstanding and tribalism and beef and stuff like that. And the best thing I can do to encourage people is just to try other people's culture. And the best thing, the best foot in the door to try and enjoy someone else's culture is the food. Maybe if we can enjoy each other's food, it can lead, you know, it can lead to interactions and pings, and it can just create more understanding. I think for us, we draw a lot of relatability from all different groups. The thing I went to go back to eat more of was the Dajang Mian. And I actually really like the chicken as well. The Hainan chicken, both the soy sauce chicken and the Hainan chicken, and then the Jajang Mian. I would say the Ovaltine was my favorite because I don't know why this sounds crazy, but that was the best Ovaltine I've ever had, even though it's just a mix. And then uh, I would say the Laksa was really good. All right, you guys, thank you so much for checking out that international episode of Fun Bros Food. We are in Beijing trying out the Singaporean chain Toast Box. David, you know what city in America I think Toast Box would work in? I think New York. Yeah. East Village. I think East Village, New York could have a Toast Box. Because I said this is probably the best chain that'll never come to America. Prove me wrong, Toast Box. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching that video. Subscribe to our channel. Turn on the notifications. We are out traveling right now, but we're coming back soon. In the comments below, let us know if there's any other multinational chains of Asian food chains that you want us to check out. This is David. This is Andrew from the Fun Bros. And until next time, we out. Peace. Man, but after all that food, you know, I need to wash it down with a cleanser. About to get some uh, fresh oh, lemonade. This, this, is this fire. One. Toast box, ice box. There's a ice box where my drink used to be. There's a ice box.